Hello, hello everyone and welcome to Divine Day Boo. This is Kathy speaking. Thank you for joining me here on this Astro Update. Before we get into the information about what's going on in the sky, the astrological weather, I'm just sending out my sincere condolences to the families and the people of Hawaii that have lost their loved ones in the wildfires. I just got news of it just now and I'm in shock. I cannot believe the damage there in the town of Maui. I sincerely send my condolences and hope that the damage is not as bad as what it's looking to be. I've heard of already 55 people having been lost in these bush bushfires. Well, they're not bushfires, but because of the high temperatures and who knows where this started from. And what, I, what I've heard is that, uh, what I've read about is that the people were not told about it. They were not notified, um, even though there's, a, there's an excellent alarm system there in Hawaii. So I'm in shock. I cannot believe that this actually happened. And... It's a disgrace. It really is a disgrace. Now, we've had a few um, fires burning all over the world, um, in Greece too, and in Canada, from what I know, and uh, I think Italy as well, if I'm, not, if I'm not wrong. Anyway, let's just pray that they get rain, they get lots of rain, and put out all these fires, extinguish, the fires and that there are no more lives lost and no more livestock no more animals and flora and fauna nevertheless so sending you my best wishes to those of you that maybe have people that you know there maybe even family may the divine um, bring an end to the suffering um, of people who are in areas that are going through catastrophes, huge catastrophes such as these. Anyway, my dears, just an astral update um, where we are now astrologically speaking, as you can see on your monitors. And remember, whatever is going on in Leo is squaring over to Taurus. So We also see on this day, on this new moon, that we had Mercury squaring over to Jupiter. Right, Mercury was squaring over to Jupiter. And uh, we're going to see more connections now of Mercury. Now Mercury has entered Virgo, and I'll show you that. So v Mercury is now trining over to Jupiter. And because Jupiter and Mercury will be retrograding, they'll be connecting three times. Okay, so this square, so whatever was going on pertaining to our perception, right? Anything to do with business, creating, giving birth to something. Remember, Mercury speaks to commerce, it speaks to information. And Mercury does speak to logic. Jupiter is the higher mind. It's the wisdom. Mercury is the information. Now, of course... Uh, you know, a square between Mercury and Jupiter means that we need to do the work. We'll be seeing the outcome of what what is it? I mean, what was this square of Jupiter and Mercury about? Because Mercury now in Virgo is at home. Um, Jupiter is the great benefic and he's in the sign of Venus. So he's trying to sort of figure things out for us. Remember, he's like Santa Claus. He brings blessings. Uh, he brings wisdom, he brings expansion, abundance, and he's in the uh, in the second natural house of Taurus, which is all about our securities, our so self-worth. Um, so Venus in Leo obviously squares over to Jupiter, and we're seeing that as well. They're connecting three times. We've also got Venus squaring over to Uranus, so we'll be looking at all these um squares but i'm just just want to go back to juno right so let's go back to the now 
Let's go back to the now. Okay, so we've got Juno now in this grand cross. So anything can happen. This is a very strong pressure point. Remember Pluto and Capricorn? Pluto and Capricorn is all about, you know, it's our goals and our aspirations. It's what we're trying to work towards. Remember the mountain goat. Capricorn is ruled by Saturn. And Saturn is also retrograde in Pisces, trying to... Um, he's trying to clear the air where there's been confusion, deception, manipulation, and maybe also forms of escapism, right? The good with Saturn in Pisces is the ability to be able to build on a dream, something that we're creating, something that we've imagined and hoped to be able to build on, um, generally speaking. But Pluto, remember, speaks to change and transformation. And where there's, when when there is a lot of pressure, there's also, you know, it's like a volcanic eruption. You know, at the base of, of the of the volcano is where, and through all that pressure is where the diamonds are created. So the pressure is on Juno now in Cancer, and this, you know, Cancer is the home. It's the mother. It's the ability to nurture, love, provide. Uh, security, um, emotional, financial, for our, for our partners, our, you know, who or what we're committed to. And there's great pressure on all of us, as we're all part of the collective, okay. So it's the cardinal signs that are feeling the heat, obviously. at this point all right so at this moment we've got mercury and mars in virgo mercury has come home to virgo mercury is all about logic and being grounded remember virgo is an earth sign it's all about putting in the work it's having the ability to cut through the chase see things clearly as remember Pisces is right opposite Pisces could speak to the illusion wearing that mask Virgo is about discernment and seeing the truth um, through the details through small um, small gradual steps working towards um, something that we can create remember Virgo rules the natural sixth house which is all about work yes it can speak to health as well now Mars is quite frustrated in Virgo he doesn't do well in in earth signs he prefers to be in fire or in air so there can be um, the inability to move forward you know Mars is more gradual he's about putting in the effort working hard yes it can be frustrating because he wants to move fast. Mars in Virgo could be very good with strategy. So he could be very strategic. Now Mars is in an inconjunction um, over to Chiron. And an inconjunction speaks to tweaking and making the adjustments that are necessary. And of course Mercury provides the details, the information. So whatever we are digging into whatever we are working on and putting in the effort and our energy into there's something that we need to tweak something that needs adjusting so that we could find the resolution right chiron the wounded healer is in aries so aries and virgo they don't share much at all you know mars uh, mars which rules aries um, is in a in conjunction to its home sign now I suppose this helps because you know Mars rules Aries but still they don't share much at all you know Aries is cardinal fire and Virgo is mutable earth anyway now it can get a little bit frustrating uh, conversations can get a little bit heated up as Mercury is with frustrated Mars here. 
Mars that is coming up, he's heading up to the 20th, the second deacon. He's going to, he's preparing to oppose Neptune, but that will not happen yet. That will happen around around the 22nd. So in about 10 days, Mars is going to be coming up to oppose Neptune in its home sign of Pisces. Um, that will more than likely because, you know, when planets connect, they usually start off, you know, they start off a new seed when they connect in a conjunction. Um, they connected Mars and Neptune they connected on the 18th of May of 2022 so issues and subjects around May of 2022 may be coming up because the conjunction is of course when Mars would have been with Neptune here at the last degrees of Pisces right that was the seed that was planted and now we're coming up coming up to the opposition which is like a full moon so subjects pertaining to Virgo and Pisces so physical our physical health um, our emotional psychological health issues such as these may be coming up things to do with service to the world and work and possibly also with little pets you know the the house of Virgo the sixth house is it does rule pets it it rules you know co-workers and our daily life our hygiene right so something may come into focus and into clarity even though you know when mars and neptune when they connect together they in a in a difficult aspect which would be of course a conjunction or an opposition or a square um, they can be very much about disorientation, possibly also frustration. Health issues could be coming up as well. We like Mars connecting well. So in a sextile, a 60 degree angle or a, or a trine, 120 degree angle, then they work well when, you know, Mars is all about the action, the orientation, the energy. And Neptune is the ability to create, whereas here there's something that is hidden. There's something that's very unhealthy, something that's not right, right? When they connect in a difficult aspect, um, we could have issues of health, viral infections, colds, flus, um, anything um, pertaining to our health, right? Because remember, this is the uh, Virgo... Pisces is the axis of health. So look, you know, that we're coming up to that. It should uh, start to play out within the next few days. Now, Venus, the goddess of love, security, pleasures, fun, values, self-worth, our money, Right, she's in Leo, she's retrograding, as you can see here with this little R, and she's coming up, she's retrograding, she's going this way, and the sun is going that way. So Venus is coming towards the sun, and the sun is moving towards Venus. So on the it's on the 13th, let's have a look exactly, I want to give you the time here. So the sun conjoining with Venus... Here it is. So on the, uh, let's just clear. Okay, 13th of August, 2023 at 2.15 p.m. Greek time. So it's 12.15 p.m. UTC time. So they're connecting this, this Kazemi of Venus and the sun. Venus being in the heart of the sun is happening at the 20th degree. 20 degrees and 28 minutes okay so this is especially important very positive for the fire signs so for leo and sagittarius and aries okay so if you've got any 
if you have anything at the 20 degree mark, give or take a couple of degrees of the fire signs, then this is very positive for you. Obviously for the fixed signs, so for Scorpio and for Taurus and for Aquarius who is in opposition to this Venus star point, obviously for Aquarius, Aquarius has got this Venus sun conjunction in their house of partners important partnerships marriage um, partnerships in business okay this is a beautiful aspect venus sun conjunction is venus being reborn now i've spoken about this on patreon we've done the venus star point venus sun conjunction that means the same thing um we've done this analysis on patreon you can join us on patreon if you are interested in um, learning about this and going into the details you can get the links beneath this video otherwise we've spoken about this even on our uh, daily reads our tarot readings as well so this point the 20 degree point of leo this venus star point because venus does form a five star a five pointed star this is one of the points of venus right um, so this is a very important conjunction, Kazemi point, where Venus gets energized, she gets purified. Um, coming up to that, which is now, um, let's go back to the now, because coming up to that, you could see she's so close, she's invisible because of the rays of the sun. We cannot see Venus because the rays of the sun is so bright. So therefore, she's called, she's getting combust combust means she's getting burnt right now so venus is what we love and with all these bushfires in a fire sign it is obvious why we're seeing so many bushfires so many wildfires burning in the world and things you know physical tangible emotional things going on Relation, re relational so relationships they could be friendships they could be family they could be with colleagues are getting burnt now they're getting purified and through fire there is a purification process that's going on now i'm not saying that you know whatever is burning in the mundane the bushfires this is not for the good of humanity and for people obviously um but on another level um whatever is purified through fire then anything that is burnt down um has got the ability to be re reborn and that that's what's going on with venus she's going from the evening star so she's been visible in the sky um in the evening sky and now she was more of a spiritual venus now she's being rebirthed into a venus morning star which means that she's visible in the sky just before sunrise so if you're interested in seeing venus as soon she will come out of the underworld as she's gone through a metamorphosis a death process um, she will soon become visible and you'll be able to see her in the morning um, in the morning sky um, I don't know exactly depending on where you are in the world but at sunrise before sunrise so i would suggest around 4 30 5 5 a.m in the morning but she's not she won't be visible yet okay she hasn't been rebirthed she's still going through that death process so where money and love and values and all venusian matters are concerned because she's not visible we don't know things are up in the air love is invisible love is not moving physical and tangible money matters are not moving right and of course venus as i said she's been um, transiting through leo and squaring over to to her home sign of taurus so this is helpful in the sense that she rules taurus and we've got the great benefics here jupiter um, and you know wild and crazy Uranus here remember they're both very spiritual planets Ur um, Uranus brings change and adjustments and tower moments and revelations and breakthroughs 
and breakdowns and just, you know, Uranus is like, a, I, I see him as a crazy elevator having lost, um, there's no power, right? Uranus speaks to power and electricity, but there's no power where the lift is concerned. So it's a lift that's going up. Um, I don't know how many levels, uh, there's either too much electricity or there's no electricity and we're going from floor number 20 down to zero in a matter of um, five seconds. It's it's the crazy elevator, that's how I see him. So sudden unexpected turns, um, you know, Uranus could speak to rebellion but he can also speak to higher knowledge or having that... Um, ability to see things from those high realms from the sky remember he is the sky god he also rules aviation and airplanes and um you know jupiter is long distance foreigners um and we've seen a lot of issues with with um airports and uh, flights being cancelled because of wildfires because of freaky weather conditions and of course uranus in taurus Taurus is the land and it's also it rules you know the weather the weather Jupiter can expand can expand on harsh weather sudden turns um, so freaky weather conditions that would be the negative on the positive side as Jupiter is slowing down greatly because he's going to retrograde at the 15th degree uh, of Taurus so again it brings up the fixed signs and going back to Venus right as she's retrograding from the 28th to the 12th degree right of Leo so obviously affecting and putting in um, a tight spot she's putting the fixed signs so Scorpio Scorpio Taurus and Aquarius going back to Aquarius being in opposition, it's Taurus and Scorpio that are in um, more the square. Now, an opposition is like a full moon. So for Aquarius, it's more like they're getting the clarity. For Taurus and Scorpio, it's more about needing to do the work. And of course, the opposition is you're needing to find the middle ground, right? An opposition is you're needing to come meet in the middle, right? So for Leo and Aquarius people, where love, value, money, partnerships are concerned, they need to find that middle ground. Right, so needing to be equal, equal, um, equilibrium, giving and receiving uh, and flowing. Um, so Jupiter and Uranus, they are, as I said, very spiritual planets. It's it's the sky it's the sky's the limit there's freedom there's truth there's justice there's an optimism and expansion and growth and um, spiritual awakening and awareness um, injustices possibly being made right there's a lot of uh, a lot of stuff going on pertaining to Libra as well remember Libra is also a sign that's ruled by Venus and Libra is justice, balance, relationships. Remember the South Node is, in, you know, um, moving through Libra. So, you know, Libra is us, whereas Aries is I. So, you know, the collective uh, future consciousness and fate is all about I, me, my. North Node is in Aries. We need to be able to stand as warriors, as whole, as the individual. Aries is the individual. It's the first sign of the zodiac, so it speaks to new beginnings, um, feeling whole within ourselves, getting uncomfortable and not depending on others or the other person only to point you to fate and destiny and what is best for you and on your path. And of course, this speaks to the collective, not only personally as we're all born with our own nodal axis in a certain area of our chart but we're all part of the um the collective as well so we are affected by the collective uh, movement of the nodes the nodes of the moon okay which are very very karmic 
points in the sky. So remember Venus in Leo, Leo being a fire sign, um, Libra is a air sign, so they are in good connection. They they connect through a sextile, yeah, through a sextile, which is a 60 degree angle. And of course, Venus um, from Leo trines over to the north node. So Venus is at the apex point, right? She is the apex. How can I do this? Okay. So she's at the point, at the focal point of what's going on, um, where karma, destiny is concerned, right? This is called a wedge, which is 60 degrees, 120 degrees and 180 degrees. The focal point is Venus here. That's why Venus is retrograding and it's a very important time. Remember, it's about making the inner child happy. Remember, Leo is the inner child. It does rule children. It does rule inspiration, creativity, uh, desire. Um, Leo is also, it's the heart. Remember, it, Leo is ruled by the sun. And of course, the sun is also the ego. It's also our core um, selves. You know, it's what some it's it's everything that is shown there's nothing hidden beneath the sun um and that's why we've seen a lot of issues pertaining to people that are in the limelight up on stage um leaders kings um governments you know people that are in positions of power um people that are seen by many um, are going through many issues right now because Leo is the king. Leo is the lion. Um, so it speaks to confidence. It speaks to generosity. It speaks to clarity. It speaks to truth. It speaks to matters of heart. But it also speaks to fun and risk-taking and gambling and investing. Right, The house of Leo is also where we invest uh, the relationships, our money, what are, what have we been invested in? We're looking at that now as Venus is retrograding, right, in this sign. So remember we're having a new moon in Leo as well on the 16th and that's happening at the 23rd degree of Leo. So again the 23rd degree, so the beginning of the third deacon of the fixed signs are being challenged by this new moon or you know sometimes I'm going to say squares are not just they can be challenges but the new moon a new moon is a new seed now the new moon in leo is not going to be an easy one <laughs> and that's where it gets a little bit more challenging for the fixed signs because the new moon in leo um, is going to be, and I'll show you that in a moment, but it's going to be in a, a challenge. It's going to be a square Uranus and on Black Moon Lilith. Let's move forward um, and just see what's going on. So here we are now, uh, before we animate the chart. Um, is there something that I need to, yeah, mention? Uh, yeah. There, there is saving grace though um, remember Jupiter squaring over to Venus they're both benefic planets even Uranus um, that's squaring over to Venus um, Uranus is just sudden right Venus is is a benefic and she is she's the sign she's the dispositor of Uranus and Jupiter so she rules you know She's in charge of Jupiter and Uranus right now. So even though they're in square, there are uh, blessings. I mean, having the two benefics, Jupiter and Venus, squaring. And Uranus being in the sign of Venus, squaring. Um, says that the changes that are being made are for our highest good. The saving grace also here is Chiron that is trining over to Venus. Right, so we're finding resolutions, the resolution, the um, the way to heal um, the inner child or 
whatever it is that we're taking a risk on, because remember that, yes, Leo is taking a risk. It's the ability to create through fire, through love, through heart, through investment. And, um, and Aries is also a cardinal fire sign. So it's all about new beginnings, right? It's the fool's journey. Now, Chiron is also retrograde. So we are revisiting the past. We've got a few retrogrades, as you can see. Venus, Chiron, um, Neptune, Saturn, and Pluto. And we're coming up to very soon to a Mercury retrograde, a Jupiter early September, Mercury end of the month of August, and Uranus also um, at the end of August. So we've got Uranus and Mercury that will be next to retrograde, and then Jupiter will retrograde early September, as Venus will be coming out of uh, retrograde, Jupiter will be turning retrograde. Um, okay, let's animate the chart and move forward a little bit i want to show you i did show you the conjunction of venus and the sun as you can see also black moon lilith uh she's also in leo and she has been for months since january actually since the beginning of the year she will finish up in leo um i think it's october Black Moon Lilith is that raw, sexual, feminine um, will, a will um, and a drive for respect and equality pertaining to the divine masculine. Remember, she's the dark side of the moon. So I usually see Venus, uh, Venus transiting through Scorpio is like a Black Moon Lilith. Um, energy for me you know black moon lilith when she's activated expect the unexpected um it, she could be really really tough to handle or to deal with and she could be a dark feminine figure in in our lives that's showing up or a situation where there's a lot of pent up um a sense of injustice and um, a lack of fairness and just losing it losing our marbles is black moon Lilith now obviously she is affecting um, Venus so she's conjoining with Venus yes and this is like Venus taking on that dark form of asking for justice and equality now remember that in mythology black moon Lilith she, uh, you know, Adam was, um, Black Moon Lilith was the first wife of Adam and um, he wanted to, you know, reign above her, um, call the shots and she was not willing to be beneath Adam. She wanted equality. So she was banished from the Garden of Eden and punished uh, where she was giving birth to her children and they were being killed in front of her. And, you know, Black Moon Lilith is in the sign of the child. So we see a lot of suffering as well pertaining to mother-child uh, issues. Um, a lot of things have come through in the news with, you know, child sex uh, trafficking and issues pertaining to the feminine, um, you know, even prostitution, sexual exploitation pertaining to the weaker, to uh, pertaining to the younger generations, right? And this is really sad. And a lot is coming through, a lot of disclosure is coming through pertaining to subjects such as these, even through um, Hollywood. And, you know, there's been such such awe pertaining to you know the film filming industry and now there's so much dirt and so much that is being revealed that is really giving a very bad name to that line 
of industry. Anyway, so Black Moon Lilith is coming up to conjoin as well as on this very important day. Mark this on your calendars. We've also got Neptune that is in conjunct to the South Node. This is like needing to tweak and see what is, you know, what's hidden be beneath the veil, behind the veil. Um, and this could also speak to the ability to see clearly, right? Because Venus is being purified by the sun. She's coming into the sun where there's a lot of light. And we're seeing what it is that we need to do to let go, make the adjustments, right, in our life, where we've been wearing the rose-colored glasses pertaining to Neptune. And I just wanted to point out also that Neptune is at the exaltation degree of Venus, as Venus is being purified by the sun. So the exaltation degree, Neptune on the exaltation degree of Venus, wow. So we are looking back to the past. Um, we are looking back to the past. And I think it was early 2022 when Venus was with a Neptune and Jupiter. Yes, it was. Was it in April? Yes, I think it was April of 2022, if I'm not mistaken, that we had a triple conjunction or we had, nevertheless, we had Venus conjoining with Neptune, and now, okay, Neptune um, concerning Leo, Neptune being a mutable water sign, Leo being a fixed, fixed fire sign, they're in an inconjunction, which says they don't share much, so they need to make the adjustments. We need to make the adjustments. That's why, again, Venus is retrograde. Because remember, Neptune can speak to that divine source, um, godly relationship, partnership, or whatever it is that we're creating. It's like needing to look behind the veil, take off those rose-colored glasses and see the truth. Um, but also, this could also speak to a release. Release and let go and see what happens. Sometimes when we push too much towards a particular um outcome it's like we're pushing it away neptune in pisces is saying release and let go leave it up to the divine up to spirit and see what comes through remember that neptune can be god himself it's it's the you know it's the angels it's spirit itself and of course neptune in pisces is at the last three degrees of a huge cycle as Pisces is the last sign of the zodiac. Wow. So, you know, Neptune is an outer planet, takes many, many years to do the whole zodiac. So I'm wondering, you know, in the next um, two, three years, if we're not ending a major cycle pertaining to the Pisces, um, Pisces part of our charts. Um, or for humanity at large. Remember, we are entering the sign of, I mean, we're moving towards the age of Aquarius. And um, there are larger cycles and smaller cycles, obviously. So Neptune takes about 14 years to do a whole sign. So you can imagine times 12. That's a whole lot. That's a whole lot. It's a huge cycle, which maybe the next three years we will um, get a handle on and see what, what, what are we ending? What are we sacrificing? What sort of karma are we releasing also as humanity, as the cosmos is going through a metamorphosis? We see that also with Pluto in Capricorn, which is a death process, okay, a death is what we're going through. And remember that Pluto is connecting um, to Neptune well. So this is also a saving grace. Let's not get stuck only on the negative changes that are going on in the world. And we know um, collectively the world is changing. It's, it's a new phase, a new world order. 
what's going to proceed and what's going to um, take the position, um, what is going to be the new face of the world and the cosmos, um, we can only imagine. So, all right, it is Capricorn. It is Capricorn that is in an in conjunction to Leo and it's Capricorn and Pisces. We have been seeing a, um, you know, a yod as Venus was at the last degrees of Leo, which she will be coming over again. Remember that Pluto and Neptune, they're outer planets, so they move very slowly. So we've been seeing this yod pointing to the area of Leo here, you know, the last degrees of Leo and the last degrees are always quite um, challenging degrees. They can be degrees of stress because the planet knows, you know, the celestial body knows that there's an ending to the environment and a change is is coming up so there's always a, a sense of urgency with the last degrees all right so all right let's move forward so let's go to the let's go to the new moon sun conjunct the moon here we are here is the new moon now we'll be going into more analysis for this on patreon so you're either on tier 2 or tier 3 to get the new moon or full moon uh, astrological analysis but just you know quickly as you could see black moon lilith yeah she's right on this new moon and uranus is in square in an exact square to this new moon and remember a new moon is a new seed and it lasts, the new moon lasts until the next new moon, but in between that we've got a full moon. So these are lunation cycles. We can look at two, a two week period or even a month from a new moon to, an, to the next new moon. So of course this is a new moon in Leo, so the next new moon will be happening in Virgo. So as we're coming into the Virgo season on the 22nd, 23rd of the month, of August so here is the new moon and 23 degrees is where it will be happening of course there's still an in conjunction from Neptune so what are we creating is it something artistic is it something um, is it something magical is it something that we're wanting to take a risk to to unveil what is what is it that we are creating now what's interesting is also that Neptune is in exaltation in Leo so this also is helping um, so there's there's um, how can I say it there's like an affiliation from Leo with Leo and Neptune Leo and Pisces because Neptune is in exaltation when he transits through a Leo then this is somewhat helpful so the adjustments that we are making now um, should put us on the path that we need to be on now we've also got a trine here from Uranus on this new moon is it exact it's almost exact a trine because we're talking about earth so obviously it's an earth trine and obviously earth trines speak to physical matters it, it, it does speak to what we're working on virgo what we're doing daily and what gives us value right taurus so these could be sudden um this is you know mars is like the accelerator it's the gas it's what we um we put the effort in and where we pour our energy into and Uranus is sudden changes sudden um, unbelievably um, well orchestrated changes 
Now Taurus is our money, our securities, and Virgo is what we're working on. So this could be abundance. There could be a sense of abundance, money coming in, money that was maybe money that you could be owed as well because remember Mars also rules Scorpio and Scorpio is money that comes through from others from other sources so this is a uh, very powerful and very uh, very wonderful as we're talking about earth now of course because they're um, both earth signs and they both speak to the body the physical body um, this is like a release also of uh, pent up and a lot of energy that's been withheld this is like a release this is like things happening on their own it's like we've already put in the effort we've done our homework right uh, mercury in virgo we've done our homework and this could be a reward for many of us you know even mars being in virgo this could be someone that you're collaborating with that's really your this is great teamwork as well so i love that okay and that's obviously on the new moon and after this venus sun conjunction all right a sense of justification i'm going to say because lilith is on the new moon as well so she does demand respect and uh, being equal and she's she's demanded she's demanding and therefore because she's been up and down in leo right leo is all about the creation it's like a you know something is growing in a, we've got a bun in the oven something is being created it's like creating something and it's going through a growing growing process and these could be growing pains as well right growing pains um but what's what else is really important is that juno has now entered um leo as well and she's going to conjoin with venus so there's a very positive aspect ahead let's uh let's move on yeah so this is the square of uh the sun and uranus right and venus has already squared over to Uranus I want to just go into that for a moment and just give you some information on that so Venus first squared Uranus they squared on the 2nd of July at the 22nd degree so obviously very important for the fixed signs Leo Aquarius Scorpio and Taurus so they squared first when they were both direct now on the 9th of august which is uh, today's the 11th so a couple of days ago they squared again but venus um is in retrograde motion and uranus was direct and they will square a third time on the 29th of september so at the 22nd 23 degrees is where they're squaring of the fixed sign so that's important to know so at the end of September Uranus will be retrograde and um, Venus will be direct okay so remember the second square which is a couple of days ago so this could be playing out for you now this could be playing out for you now um, that you're having some sort of a revelation pertaining to Uranus and Venus remember Uranus is in the money house of Taurus Venus rules Taurus Uranus in Taurus is ups and downs sudden changes turns and uh, Venus is a benefic so maybe also sudden revelations and news that comes in because Uranus is news it's communication remember it rules the 11th house which is social media friendships this could be good news pertaining to social media anything to do with business creation um giving birth to something and the the second square is always when we've got more revelation right we've got more information about what is playing out pertaining to early july okay so very important for the fixed signs around the uh from the 20th degree to the 25th degree 
I would say, of Leo, Aquarius, Scorpio, and Taurus. Okay, so that's the Venus. That's the Venus Uranus squares that are going on. We've also got. We see Mercury. Mercury at the 19th degree. Mercury is preparing. Let's move forward. As Mercury is going to get to roughly the 22nd degree before his stations to turn retrograde. Um, on the 18th of August, Ju uh, Jupiter is still at the 15th degree. He's slowing down greatly as he's preparing. He's stationing to turn retrograde. So here is Mercury. Mercury and at 21 degrees. So Mercury is also trining over to Uranus. This is the ability to use logic as well as, um, you know, the higher mind to uh, this is great intelligence this is great conversations uh disclosures unexpected positive news that's coming in pertaining to health uh, money matters work matters all these themes will be coming up with you know uranus trining over to mercury let's move forward and we are going to see mercury we're going to see Mercury that's preparing to retrograde now, but we've we've seen this T square. Well, we've got Hygieia here, which we don't usually mention. Hygieia is the asteroid of health. She could be in 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 um, looking at the health of our relationships. Remember Venus or our money or what we're creating or. You know, Venus could also speak to a divine feminine figure in our life, a daughter, let's say, or even a friend, let's say, the health of our friendship with a divine feminine. Are they valuing us? Um, is the relationship healthy, um, the love relationship? But we've got Jupiter squaring over to Venus, so I'm wanting to go into the Jupiter squaring over to Venus so just to give you the information on that so going back to the 11th of June Jupiter squared Venus they were at five degrees of the fixed sign so Jupiter was at five degrees of Taurus and Venus was at five degrees of um, Leo so it was affecting the fixed signs that are born in the first deacon right so up to uh, the uh, 10th degree let's say roughly of the fixed signs they were both direct obviously then now um so that was back in june mid-june now on the 22nd of august jupiter direct will be squaring over to venus that is retrograde so 22nd of august as you could see here remember the second connection and they do meet up three times because they're retrograding so the second hit or the second connection whether you know it's a square or a trine whatever it is it's when we have more clarity more understanding about what is going on so remember they're both benefic planets and it doesn't matter that they're in square they're still bringing blessings in the only danger is not to over exaggerate or be over optimistic don't overdo it don't be overconfident don't get on that high horse of yours if you think that you're making it big you're you know you've got major winnings where money is concerned or love don't get a big inflated ego because Jupiter can be like a balloon right he can deflate you suddenly okay so that's the only danger here and the next square between jupiter and venus the great benefics will be on the 17th of september so straight after that new moon in virgo which will be happening at the 22nd degree interesting look at where mercury the ruling planet of virgo is at the 22nd degree where he's going to station to turn retrograde this is where the new moon will take place so do you have 
first of all are you a mutable sign so Virgo Pisces or Sagittarius or Gemini if you are mm. and you're born you've got planets you've got your Sun or your moon or your you know your important angles which 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 are the angles they're the ascendant the descendant the um, mid heaven and the IC so the first house for those of you that are not familiar the fourth yeah the seventh I do apologize about the drawing but I'm using my mouse and it can't be I can't have straight lines these are your angles your most important angles and it depends on what you've got on your rising sign then you would know in which area in which area is Virgo because this is where we can have a new moon um, next 15th of September and Mercury is going to station to turn retrograde so do you have anything of the mutable signs any planets or angles or anything at all at the 22nd 21st 22nd degrees of Virgo Virgo or Pisces or Sagittarius or Gemini because that's a very important point okay me personally I've got my Uranus at 22nd at 22 degrees <laughs> excuse me I've got Uranus sorry at 20 degrees and I've got my Mercury at 22nd degree so both my Uranus and my Mercury will be affected by uh, the uh, Mercury retrograde as well as the new moon so very important very important this is what we're coming up to so leaving the Jupiter Venus square which the last square will be on the 17th of September as I just said at the 15th degree now we've got Jupiter direct now on the 22nd and Venus retrograde on the 17th of September we can have Jupiter retrograde because he's going to turn retrograde on the 4th of September when Venus turns direct so it's like and that's what I was saying the other day it's like they're connecting well together the two benefics passing on the baton pertaining to revisiting the past and finding the treasures that have been missed right treasures can speak to mundane emotional psychological physical treasures yeah so that 15th degree pertaining pertaining to the fixed signs is a very important degree because Jupiter even Mercury I mean when when uh, Mercury retrograded was it in was it in Taurus was it on that 15th was Mercury Mercury did retrograde in Taurus I can't remember the exact degrees but that 15th degree is very prominent from the 5th to the 15th degree very prominent degrees of of Taurus but also well of course Leo the fixed signs because Venus is passing over that 15th degree as well yeah I think it was Mercury at the fifth to the 15th degree I will check that it's truth how much can one remember eh talking about degrees and yes it was the fifth from the fifth to the 15th degree that Mercury retrograded in the sign of Taurus now Mercury is preparing to retrograde in Virgo it's its home sign but also Jupiter is also um, going to be retrograding from the 5th to the 15th degree so you see Jupiter now will be retrograding over the same degrees that Mercury retrograded over and you know Taurus and Virgo they are they're in good connection they're earth signs they're sister earth signs mm. so they do help each other okay so let's let's move forward since we finished looking at the Jupiter and Venus Jupiter and Venus uh, retrograde connections 
square connection through their retrogrades. Um, now, just remember that Jupiter retrograde will be opportunities that have been missed that are returning. Doors will open. For me in the tarot, the Four of Cups is Jupiter retrograde. That's how I see it. The returning of opportunities, but also possibly also the judgment card. Now, Jupiter will be retrograding on the 4th of September at the 15th degree of Taurus until 31st of December when he will get to the fifth degree of Taurus. So from early September until end of the year, Jupiter will be retrograding. But, but looking back at the 12th of, 12th of June, Jupiter entered his shadow phase from the fifth degree. So Jupiter was at the fifth degree of Taurus. He was right here. On the 12th of June, he entered his shadow phase because, remember, it's called the pre-shadow because he entered his shadow phase, he's going to get to the 15th degree and then he's going to return back to that 5th degree where he's going to be retrograding and then turn direct again. So this will, you know, from the 12th of June, he's entered his pre-shadow and then... 4th of September he retrogrades back to the 5th degree and then he will be right so he'll be retrograding on the 4th of September all the way up until the end of the year and then he will enter his post shadow um, he will finish so he will get back to the 15th degree of Taurus on the 25th of March of 2024 so Jupiter has brought blessings, is bringing blessings to, of course, the Earth signs, Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn, that have got planets or angles from the fifth degree all the way, not from the fifth, from the zero degree, let's say, from the beginning to the 15th degree. So the, you know, the half, first half of the Earth signs, the degrees that cover the first half of the earth signs um, for the fixed signs obviously they're in square right so leo squares uh, sorry taurus squares leo taurus squares aquarius and taurus opposes scorpio okay so the blessings and of course even squares from jupiter are blessings i'm going to say even though they could be a little bit uncomfortable so from the beginning of 2024 as uh, I should say from March, from March, um, he, he will start to cover the ground, the last 15 degrees of Taurus. So therefore bring the blessings to the middle of the second decan to the end of the earth signs and obviously to the fixed signs. But the revelations for his retrograde, especially from the fifth degree to the 15th, will come to you guys at the beginning of 2024 until the end of March. Okay, okay because he's going to cover, he's going to be on his post-shadow degrees where you will have the gifts that come from Jupiter. All right? I know it can get a little bit, a little bit, how can I say, confusing, but... If you join us on Patreon, then going over so much more information, you will be able to understand. And of course, if it's too hard for you to, for you to understand right now, leave it as your knowledge is growing slowly um, moving forward. And you can listen to this again and again. I hope I haven't missed anything. Anyway, so that's that's the Jupiter retrograde. Okay. I may also do a, uh, a video on Patreon in relation to the Jupiter retrograde and I try and do extra perks. They're usually on tier three. My dear patrons, those of you that are listening, it's tier three that get the extra perks because it is the higher tier. So let's look at Mercury retrograde. Mercury retrogrades on the 23rd of August 
At the 21st degree, all the way up until the 15th of September, Mercury retrogrades for about three weeks. Mercury will get to the 8th degree of... So from the 21st to the 8th degree of Virgo, right? These are the degrees where Mercury will be retrograding over. Now, Mercury entered his pre-shadow. So the degrees, he entered the 8th degree on the 4th of August, so early August. And he will finish, he will, he will travel over the degrees that he retrograded over and finish those degrees on the 29th of September. Therefore, his post-shadow will end on the 29th of September. So Mercury will be covering new ground at the end of September. But to be a little bit more precise, uh, he's retrograding on the 22nd degree of Virgo. So it is 21 degrees and 45 minutes, so it's the 22nd degree. Let's go now into the Uranus retrograde, shall we? So Uranus, Uranus's retrograde begins on the 29th of August, so in a, uh, in a couple of weeks from now when I'm doing this. Um, he begins his pre-shadow. He began his pre-shadow, so he entered the degrees that he'll be retrograding over. Um, so the 23rd degree is where he's going to get to. But he's retrograding from the 19th degree of Taurus until the 23rd degree. So his pre-shadow began when he was at 19 degrees of Taurus. And that began on the 12th of May this year of 2023. His post-shadow ends on the 12th of May, 2024. That's exactly a whole year. So Uranus is retrograding and covering the degrees from the 19th to the 23rd. It's taking him a whole year. It's these degrees that he is retrograding over, so it's very important. Again, I'm going to say for the Earth signs, right? Taurus, Virgo, Capricorn. Taurus, Virgo, here we are, and Capricorn, right? So uh, Taurus obviously trines over to Virgo, Virgo trines over to Capricorn, okay? This is an Earth trine. So we can even uh, mention Mars on the 22nd of August. He's coming up to trine Pluto. Can you see this? So very important mm -hmm. for the Earth signs that have got planets um, at the last degrees of the earth signs so it's in um, may mid-may of 2024 that uranus will enter the 24th degree he will be covering new degrees so after the 23rd degree <clears throat> Okay, so let's move forward. Let's move forward. So we're coming up to the 23rd. Just checking to see that I've covered everything. And as you can see on the 23rd, the sun has ingressed into Virgo. It is Virgo season. Okay, so the focus will be on the mutable signs. And as the sun enters Virgo, the sun knows that it's going to oppose Saturn very soon. And that could be quite challenging, obviously. Okay, so the 23rd and the 24th, this is when uh, Mars is coming up to trine uh, Pluto the more exact on the 25th of August remember Mars in Virgo is the action it's the effort it's themes pertaining to our daily life to what we're working on remember that Capricorn is more it's it's the natural 10th house 
right? Uh, you, as you could see in the natural uh, zodiac, we've got Capricorn on the midheaven, so it's all about our goals and our aspirations, right? This is like pressing on the accelerator, but very carefully and through looking at the details. And as you could see here, Mercury has also turned retrograde. Interesting that we've got Lilith here now in Virgo, but she's retrograding. Lilith uh, has not finished, has not finished mm -hmm. in in Leo, not until October. So we've still got a while to go yet. Okay, and... Um, Let's see Venus is coming up to the 12th degree. This is where she stationed to turn retrograde. So towards the end of August, as I said, it's on the 4th of September that she turns direct, but she's slowing down now, obviously, and a retrograde planet is always slower. Um, it looks like it looks like it's going quickly, turning quickly, but it is in slow motion and it is closer to the Earth, so very potent. Now the sun is already in opposition to Saturn. Remember the sun is clarity. The sun in Virgo is all about the details. It's all about healing a situation. But there's an opposition. Uh, we can't do this. There is an, um, an opposition. Trying to draw an opposition here. Right? An opposition between Saturn, which... In Pisces, Saturn, remember, is the lord of timing and karma, and he's opposing Virgo. Virgo is all about the details, so it's like the sun is saying, hold on, wait, we need to get the clarity, we need to put in extra effort. Um, the sun is leadership, of course, the sun is not strong in Virgo, the sun rules um, Leo, um, but the sun does bring clarity and does bring healing and service, service um, through our daily life, through people that we collaborate with. What are we working on? The sun uh, in Virgo brings the, you know, brings the ego down as we're needing to look at the de details, we're needing to discern how can we overcome this opposition to Saturn? Because Saturn is the opposition right it's needing to put in extra effort start you know we're talking about earth now the sun is in an earth sign so it's all about practical matters practical steps taking a step at a time trying to heal to heal a situation and mercury is doing his research mercury is all about the research and mercury is in beautiful trine to uranus these this could also be potential discoveries and new ways of healing technological ways of you know new source of healing methods right uh, uranus is technology it's new age um, revelations discoveries uh, this is what it's all about now it's all about healing new methods of healing holistic methods of healing um, or bringing um, new sources of ways of working um, technology coming in to help us work and get over um, the practical side of creation right remember the Sun is the ruling planet of Leo and Leo is the sign of inspiration and creation creating Right. Um, okay, we are heading towards towards a new moon. Uh, sorry, a full moon in Pisces, and as the sun um, is coming up, we've we've got a full moon in Pisces, which is happening at the seventh degree. So this is the opposition on the twenty seventh of August. It's going to be exact, but you'll be feeling it uh, before that, before the actual date. Now, Mars being at the last 
uh, degree of Virgo. There's a sense of urgency again here, and it is the peak, the apex to uh, two sessi squares. Can you see these sessi squares, which is a square and a half square, which equal 135 degrees? They are challenging aspects and they're very karmic, and it's pointing to Mars. Now, Hygieia is squaring over to Jupiter and Mars. Mars, which is, remember, frustrated. And Mars is also preparing to ingress into Libra, where he's, he's in fall in Libra, because remember, Mars rules Aries. Yeah? So this, this um, hammer, Thor's hammer, it's called. It's a very karmic aspect. It's very similar to the Yod, but it's a very challenging, very heavy aspect. It can be quite dangerous as well. Jupiter can expand. Now, remember that there's an... Um, Mars now is in an Assessi square, so a challenging aspect to Jupiter. Mars and Jupiter together can be quite... You know, Jupiter will amplify the urgency and the stress um, pertaining to Mars in Virgo being at the 29th degree. It will bring up matters pertaining to work and health and values and um, finances as well. And because Jupiter amplifies on the urgency, it can be quite stressful. Now, Assessi Square is very karmic and it's also something that's playing out in the background. So something that we're not wanting to to consider to look at it's like sweeping something under the carpet you know i'm gonna look i'm not going to notice that elephant in the room i'm not going to pay any, uh, anything any attention to this urgent state or matter i'm just wanting to let it go but there's something that spirit is pointing to here saying and it's it's connected to health as well Right. Uh, remember that both Taurus and Virgo, they're the physical body. Right. Um, the mundane matters pertaining to health um, and money. Jupiter squaring over to Venus can bring extra expenses. We can over exaggerate or overspend. These could be health issues or issues of urgency pertaining to the details as well or this, the work that we're putting in, the effort we're putting into something. It's like we're overdoing something and sort of wanting to sweep something under the carpet. And Mercury is in retrograde, so we're talking about revisiting the past, going over information needing to retweak or re um, you know look at the details go over details miss details I do apologize about the alarm, the alarm in the background you you could probably hear it slightly okay so let's move forward as thank you as the Sun uh, let's let's do this. Sun conjunct moon, um, it should be sun opposing moon, I do apologize. So here we are, it's the seventh degree of the mutable signs that will be affected by this full moon happening in Pisces, that's on Saturn. Even though the moon has passed over Saturn, which sort of brings a little bit of a relief, it's more when the moon is coming towards Saturn. Um, that, you know, Moon Saturn could be a little bit of depression, um, blockages pertaining to subconscious matters, fears, uh, restrictions. And this has got to do, obviously, with health, with uh, our daily lives, with work. Remember Virgo being the sixth natural house and the, the, the full moon, something is completing here. And remember, Pisces is the 12th house. So this could be a karmic completion point, um, you know, with a full moon, obviously, what was going on with a new moon in Pisces back in March. 
actually February 20th was the the new moon in Pisces, which happened at the first degree. Now we're talking about the seventh degree, so it is pertaining to uh, Pisces, Virgo, Sagittarius, and Gemini. Do you have anything um, close to those, you know, that seventh degree? I would say four, five, six, seven degrees, and up until 10 degrees of the mutable signs. This could be a little bit of a... Uh, disappointment here with what it is that we're hoping to create right Saturn in a very creative and magical sign of Pisces this could be also like because a full moon does bring clarity it brings information in so some sort of a disappointment of something not working out the way that you imagined or that you hoped that you could create and Venus is stationing to turn direct she's stopping she's very very slow indeed right now and just um, moving forward as we're looking now at Juno she's traveling with Venus where is Venus there's Venus direct uh, Greek time well fourth or fifth of September depending on where you are in the world but she's turned direct and Juno is right there they're traveling together so early September they're traveling together and we could see here that uh, let's see uh, Jupiter there's Jupiter he's stationed to turn retrograde as Venus turns direct so Venus now um, early September she's going to connect with Jupiter in a square again um, but starting from the 12th degree, roughly on the 9th of September, Juno and Venus are conjoining here. So very important for the fire signs at the beginning of the second deacon and for the fixed signs, of course. So from the 12th degree, 13, 12th and 13th degree of um, Leo, but still they're going to connect. They're still connecting all the way up until, I think it's the 21st. There, there's, they're, they're conjoining right on that Venus star point. So pay attention to the end of September. Um, let's look at Lilith as she also... So Lilith, towards mid-August, she's going to enter Virgo, right? So she's challenging us on the, on the new moon, on the new moon in Leo. And then she's moving towards Virgo. God help us, my dear mutable signs. But she's not done there. She's not done in Leo yet. As you can see, 1st of September, she re-enters Leo. She's like a pendulum. She swings like a pendulum. And as you can see, she's traveling together with Venus and Juno for a little while, early September. So that will be interesting, right? That will be interesting. All right, my dear friends. Let's go to the end of August as we are closing up the month. Is there anything else that I need to tell you? You know, there will be a blessing when Venus conjoins with Juno. Um, so towards the end of September, obviously, and Venus will come out of her shadow phase as well. Um, hmm. Let's see when Venus finishes up her, she ends her shadow phase. So her post shadow ends when she gets to the 28th degree. So roughly, yeah, the beginning of October, um, around the 7th of October is when Venus will start to enter new turf. She will start to cover new ground. So she's, you know, 
she's been in Leo for a few months. So the issues of Leo are coming up for all of us. Think about it. Where is Leo? Which area of your chart? Which part of your life does Leo take up? So which house? That's something to really think about. And just looking at Mars. Mars is going to enter Libra. So we'll start to sort of trigger. Here we are. So on the 28th is when um, Mars will be in fall um, because he's he rules he rules the opposite sign of Aries. Um, so he will start to trigger and will be doing the work. He, the, there can be a lot of frustration with Mars in in um, in Libra. Okay, Mars. Mars is a sign of action and combative energies, but you know how he can help in Libra is all about collaboration and cooperation and coexistence. These are all words pertaining to Libra. Okay, Libra is relationship, so Mars is wanting to do the work and can be quite frustrating, of course. Um, so Mars, of course, is opposing Aries, so he's going to come up to oppose Chiron and then he will be con conjoining with the South Node. And remember, the South Node in Libra is what we should be letting go of. Anyway, my dear friends, I think that we've covered a lot pertaining to the astrology. I hope that this helped. I really, really do. I want to thank you for joining me here. And again, my condolences to the victims, to the, to the family members of the victims in Hawaii. And let's just hope that there will be no more loss, no more um, losing people through these crazy um, weather conditions that bring on, you know, we've had uh, very bad fires all over, all over the world. And of course, as the sun has been transiting and is still transiting through Leo, which is a fire sign, it can really uh, bring in lots of fires and lots of uh, challenging weather conditions. Because remember also that uh, Taurus is is the earth it is mother gaia and the sun squares over to jupiter who can expand on the issues of fires and uranus uranus is electrical so even you know electricity um can also and even thunder and lightning can spark off uh fires right anyway i want to thank you all so much for taking out you know your precious time spending your precious time with me being here and thank you for your likes your shares your comments and your subscriptions always and your donations for those of you that feel um, called to donate to the channel in whichever way I mean even through spending your time and going through um, the videos, you know, watching videos till the end, even that helps the channel. And I want to thank you again. I'm wishing you well, dear friends, especially pertaining to this Venus star point, this new beginning. Um, I'm hoping that it works in your favor for all of you, because we've all got Leo somewhere in our chart. And a special thank you always to my patrons and, of course, to those of you that are here, that are subscribed and that comment every time on these free videos. Much love to all of you. I will catch you very soon. To my patrons, I'm doing a new moon, uh, the new moon in Leo, um, probably tomorrow. So stay tuned for that. For those of you that are wanting more on tarot, we have done the individual signs for the month of August on tier one on Patreon. We've also done the elemental free readings where I go into the individual signs at the end of the elemental. Uh, so fire, water, air and earth. 
At the end, we go into the uh, individual signs. We do talk for about five, eight minutes there. But on Patreon, of course, we do 40, 40, 45 minutes, 35 minutes. And we go into the tarot um, and looking into individual love readings for everyone, for all the signs. So you may consider joining us on tier tier one. It it's a very small cost. It cost um, it's it's the cost of purchasing a cup of coffee, let's say. So you may want to join us there on tier one. If you're interested in more of the astrology, then I would suggest tier two and then tier three. Dear friends, we are thinking of um, setting up a tier four where we will be having coffee. We'll be talking about the weather, the astrological weather, and we'll be learning about the astrology. That's where we, we will be connecting, where you could ask ask me questions, get your answers uh, your questions answered and also we'll be looking into those who are in the group will be looking into your personal birth charts if you're wanting to share your natal birth chart with the group so we are preparing that i um i've heard from a lot of people that they're interested in learning astrology so i'm working on it and uh, thank you for your patience. Much love and much light to all of you. Enjoy your weekend. Um, enjoy being alive. I will talk to you soon. Namaste and stay connected with me. I love to hear from all of you. Ta-da.